Let's stand. Say today I love my life. Yeah, every day I wake up and I say today I love my life. Then goes every day when I wake, there's a choice I can make to be grateful or sad, forgive or stay mad. It's all up to me. What I focus on will be in my life. It's all right, dark turns to light. I give thanks and I say, this is my lucky day. I'm alive, oh, you're alive. Every day I wake up and I say, today I love my life. Mary loves it. Every day I wake up and I say, today I love my life. OK, one more time. Good morning. good morning it's so good to see all these smiling faces and feel all this positive energy and i thank you for being here and if you don't know i am susan clutis and i'm your trustee on duty today on behalf of reverend donna and the board of trustees i'm privileged to welcome you here to the sonoran desert center for spiritual living Whoever you are and wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are truly welcome here. Here you will be validated, supported, and encouraged to be all that you're meant to be. Our vision statement is love in action every day in every way. We express this love by learning and living the principles of the science of mind. You'll find our Declaration of Principles on the back of your program. Please join me in reading them now. I believe there's an infinite intelligence operating throughout the universe. I believe this intelligent power is only good. I believe it expresses as me. I believe through my conscious use of this power, I create my life as happy, healthy, and complete. And so it is. I'm looking around and I do not believe we have any first time visitors. So thank you for the continuing on visitors. Um, I have to tell you that there is a little bit of everything in the back. Afterwards, please come and visit and share. The early birds got a special treat. There was some quiche left in the fridge. And um, I have to warn you, anything I find in the fridge when I arrive Sunday morning is fair game. So a bunch of us had breakfast together. Just remember, you might benefit by coming early. I would like to thank all the folks that make this Sunday celebration possible. And of course, it's every one of you who share your energy with us. I also want to extend a special thank you to the people that bring our goodies. Um, it, we have a wonderful group of supporters, and if I say I need something, it shows up. And so I thank you. It's a whole group of folks, but they keep this thing going so nicely. Okay, well, please direct your attention to the announcements that are in your bulletin. And if you're watching online, please visit CLA, 
www.zorg.org for our announcements and our events calendar. Judy Robertson, and it's my pleasure to be the practitioner this morning at the Senor and Desert Center. The practitioners are the healing arm of the center. If you have anything causing you any difficulty, no matter how large or small, you're welcome to fill out a prayer card. They're on the table over there. Put it in the box and know that the practitioners will pray for you this week. Now I'm going to light this candle. This represents the light that you shine out into the world. And if you would like to get comfortable while I do the invocation, close your eyes if you wish. This invocation is right from the Science of Mind textbook. It's entitled, Divine Companionship. I have an inner friend who walks and talks with me each and every day. He is not far off, but he is within me, a constant companion. I have but to speak, and he will answer me. Before my lips ever spoke, he told me, of his love. Oh, kind friend, how dear you are. This presence is very dear to me. The spirit within me is my friend. Namaste, and so it is. And the talk that I've chosen today is entitled you have chosen to remember. God's perfect love took a moment in eternity, thought, then you were created. You are the physical manifestation of the thought of perfect love here upon this earth. So today, stop. Align yourself with the thought of love. Now listen, what aspect of love that this moment and those in it seem to be requesting from you. Now be whatever they are requesting. This is why you are here. This is your primary mission upon this earth. Your purpose is to be the light within the darkness. You are an example 
of the choice of peace to those who appear to be in pain. Your mission is to represent in every interaction the expression of love that only you can be here upon this earth. And when this happens, you will feel a great sense of fulfillment. Now you are doing what you were created for. So today, listen and align with your loving nature and offer only the love that you are to those who God chooses to send your way. Namaste. Thank you. And now I'm going to take this candle as I hold a high watch. Thank you. This is a song, an original song that I really need to record, I think. But it speaks directly to what Judy just said. We tend to do that a lot, Judy and I. You are a gift to this ordinary earth. You're a star doesn't know their worth to let a light shine forth in the night a sparkle in the dark I'll see it for you even when you don't when they knock you off your throne I'll be to dust you off, straighten your crown, your treasure they can't see. How you identify your dress could never make you any less. You are perfect. Remarkable, you are a child of love. My heart is so full, and I'm grateful, so grateful that you're in my life. You're perfect in my eyes. I'll be there Straighten that crown Your treasure That they can't see Don't let them get you down Don't let them under your skin Celebrate all that you are and all that you're becoming. And through it all, you are perfect, remarkable. You're a child of love My heart is so full And I'm grateful, so grateful You're in my life You're perfect in my eyes 
Yeah, you're perfect So perfect In my eyes Thank you, you're namaste Yeah, sweetie, that should absolutely be recorded. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I, uh, and people have kind of noticed that I have a walker and a cane and all kinds of stuff. I'd let you know that, that uh, my right knee has been bothering me for a long time and my left knee went out. <laughs> So, um, and thank God for, for Don and Lynn, they, they came and got me, took me to the hospital, got me x-rays, gave me a walker, <laughs> so, um, but I'm fine, I'm fine, it's just a matter of this thing's going to have to heal one way or another, so, um, but I just want you to know I'm, I'm okay, and I really appreciate, um, I really appreciate this spiritual family because so many people called, and you know, Bruce and Wanda called, and even though they can't be here, um, just to check on me. So I just, I feel very, very loved and, and uh, very, very much um, belonging in, <laughs> in this beautiful spot. So our theme for the month of September is Reflections on the Art of Living. And, uh, and that's because we're here I think that, that we're here at the center to become more spiritually aware. Um, and from that spiritual awareness, we can live a life that's full of joy, um, that's full of compassion, that's full of love. We believe in the power and presence of this infinite God and so to live fully means that we have a connection with something greater than we are. We can feel it. We know it. And it doesn't matter what we actually believe as far as our inward beliefs. It, it is the faith that makes us whole. Um, anyhow, there was a connection that was made last week. And Amy told us about it on Coffee with the Rev. And it was, it, it touched my heart. And um, uh, she had the experience, but John was miles away. And he was awakened by it. So I would like for them to come and tell their story. <laughs> yeah, come on up. Come on. Well, I just want to say it was, I missed everyone, so I'm very glad to be back. Um, what happened was I was coming home from Idaho, and um, about 11 o'clock at night, I was traveling through Nevada in the mountains. And, um, I knew that there would be animals traveling up in that area. And um, as I was driving along, about five minutes before I saw this huge trophy bull elk, I had the urge to pray, and I prayed that God would keep me safe. And then five minutes later, in the passing lane, there was this enormous bull elk. And his rack was uh, wider than my vehicle. And uh, I <laughs> slammed on the brakes. And as I slammed on the brakes, the car was loaded so much that the um, sun shields went over the windshield. And I couldn't see if I had stopped in time to see this huge elk. But thank God as I stopped. <laughs> And I moved the sun shields away. All I saw was his ankles about a foot and a half on the side of the car. So thank you, Lord. And um, then John would like to share his take on what happened with that event as well. So, so about 10 minutes before um, she called me, it was about 10.30 at night, and, um, and I had already gone to bed, but I'd been laying in bed just tossing and turning. And my spirit was totally unsettled, and I thought, man, so I couldn't figure out, I couldn't think of anything that was wrong in my life, and yet I just felt this unsettling, and I finally, I, I just looked up, you know, laid in bed, and, well, God, what, why do I feel this way? And he said, you need to pray. 
okay, so what do I need to pray about? And, and immediately she came to mind as she was traveling. So I prayed. I prayed that um, she'd be all right. You know, she'd be come home safe and nothing would be wrong. And, and I tried to roll over and go back to sleep. And I still felt unsettled. I just felt like, what's going I, Still, there's something wrong. So I said, God, is there something else? And he says, yes, you need to pray for a car. So I prayed for a car. I'm sorry, it's kind of... Ten minutes later, she calls me up and tells me this story. And, uh, you know, the fact that, you know, that just made me realize just how much God cares about us and loves us because he alerted us both at the same time when we needed to pray and ask for protection over our lives. And, and um, we both prayed the same prayer at the same time, 700, 800 miles apart from each other. And... And because of that, I believe that um, I believe that she came home safely, and the car came home safely because of those prayers. And and uh, so I don't know. It just made me very, very happy to to be reminded that God loves us. He cares about us, and He, if we just listen to those that inner voice that talks to us, that we need to, you know, if we do that, I think our lives will be a lot better. You know. And um, anyway, that was what happened to us, and it's. For us, it's quite an amazing uh, experience. So that was it. Well, isn't that wonderful? I mean, we we just there's so many um, synchronicities and coincidences that. I have learned that we don't call them coincidences. <laughs> They're God giggles and they do come from this spiritual connection that we have. So I was really happy that Amy shared at Coffee with the Rev and that they were willing to share this morning with, with all of us. My topic today is stand like mountain, flow like water. And it comes first of all from the movements in Tai Chi. With each move, one either stands straight and unwavering, like a mountain, or moves gently, no jerky or sudden movements, like water flowing in a stream. The phrase, stand like mountain, flow like water, is also the title of a book written by Brian Luke Stewart. Um, and it's the title of a song written by a friend of ours, a friend of mine for 40 years, a friend of ours here at the center, a um, friend of, of uh, uh, Heather's, Greg Tamlin. And, and it's, um, it has a wonderful story with it. Um, again, one of those things you can't pass off as coincidence. And this is what happened in Greg's own words. A few years ago, I was invited to open a wellness conference with a concert. I decided to stick around and the next day I went to a presentation by someone named Brian Luke Stewart. His talk was great, and I had a couple of songs that related directly to it. So afterward, I stuck my hand in the crowd of people around him, introduced myself, and asked if I could send him some songs. He said, sure. I sent them off, and about, after about three weeks, I got a reply. Luke said he enjoyed my songs and had an idea for another one. He's, he had a new book coming out, and he'd always thought the title of his book, taken from an old Tai Chi saying, would make a great country song, stand like water, uh, stand like mountain, flow like water. Now, I didn't think it was really very country, but I loved the title. So I called him and told him I'd love to take a crack at writing it, he said, great, and since I was going to be in Denver, near where he lives, we decided to meet and talk it over. So we tossed around a few ideas, and I went home to write it, and over the next 10 months or so, I basically got nowhere. Then one day, I was sitting in my living room in Kansas City reading the paper. There was a half-page piece on a woman named Nian Cheng and her book, 
Life and Death in Shanghai. The article recounted how during Mao's cultu cultural revolution in the 60s, Nian Cheng had been thrown into prison essentially for being an educated woman. Um, in the middle of the night, she had been dragged out of her home by Mayo's Red Guards, who smashed all her possessions, took her teenage daughter away, and dragged her off to prison. She was thrown into a tiny cell with no trial, no idea what she had done, no idea how long she might be there, and no contact with the outside world. So for the next six and a half years, she endured unbelievable deprivation, humiliation, degradation, and interrogation. Mao's guards thought that by putting her in prison, they could get her to confess to crimes that she did not commit. But Nian Cheng was too strong. Her captors could definitely control her physically, but what they discovered was they could not control her mind, her emotions, or her spirit. By turning their own rhetoric and distorted logic back around on them, she resisted all attempts to get her to sign false confessions, and she endured everything that they did to her. After six and a half years, the political climate changed, and she was finally able to get out of prison. And at this point, she was 63 years old, and though not in the best physical shape, emotionally and mentally, she was still strong. When I read about someone like Nian Chen, I wondered what they, have, what they have inside that makes them able to survive this kind of insanity. I wondered if there's anything I can learn from them. And I was greatly inspired by Nian Chen's considerable strength, courage, and grace. I thought she was so strong she could adapt to what they were doing to her. Her tremendous inner strength gave her outer flexibility. Inner strength, outer flexibility, stand like mountain, flow like water. There it was, the song. I hurried down to Nashville and met with my writing partner, Richard Helm. The song came quickly and we were both happy with it. I sent a copy off to Luke, who had given me the title. A couple of days later, he called me and I could hear the excitement in his voice. He told me that he really liked what he, what we had done with the song, but that he had a question. He said, uh, by any chance, was this song about Nian Chen from China? I replied that it was and asked how on earth he knew that. And he said, oh, she's a friend of mine. <laughs> so through Luke, Greg actually met and spoke several times with Nian Chen. Um, and once over a long lunch, she told Greg stories about growing up in China and about being in prison, even a few things that she could not uh, put in the book for fear of reprisal. Um, after a couple of hours of being mesmerized and, and inspired by her stories and impressed by her grace and dignity, Greg asked her if she had a philosophy of life. And she said, of course, I have a philosophy of life. Always be in control of your own life and always be optimistic. That's beautiful, Nian, Greg said, but you were in prison. What do you mean by always be in control of your own life? Always have a plan, she replied. Even when I was in prison, I had a plan. Really? What was your plan, Greg asked. She smiled. My plan was to live longer than Mao. <laughs> Stand like mountain, flow like water, inner strength, outer flexi flexibility. Stay in control of your life and be optimistic. Um, and if we can really believe and live like that, then there is nothing we need to do but stand in our own faith. We may follow through with a physical or mental response, but that will simply be the outpicturing of the inner strength that is the God within, that is the love within us. And when we know beyond any doubt that we can stand like mountain, and yet we can flow like, like a river, we are expressing God as strength and faith, and we are expressing God as love. There is nothing that needs to be defended. There's no reason to argue, because we defend and we argue when we have doubts. So we need to look at those areas where we are unshakable in our faith and belief. And we need to pay attention when we move to a defensive position, because that defense 
gives us the opportunity to bring our inner doubts and fears into the light of day where they may be faced and healed. Our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, says there is an inner something in us that belongs to the universe, and we have to get rid of all that inhibits it. Every sense of rejection and guilt and insecurity and anxiety, we belong to God. The universe holds us forever in its warm and close embrace. When you and I turn to that divinity within us, we shall feel something and we shall know something that every endeavor of the ages has sought after, the living God. Here and here alone is security. Here and here alone is peace. It is in the wind and the wave, the song of the child, the crooning of the mother, the beauty of the sunset, and the golden glory of dawn's rise over the mountaintops into the newness of another day. So because you and I are practicing the art of spiritual living, we are learning to use our faith to stand like mountain or flow like water, what we need to do. We are learning to come to each day, each moment with optimism and with anticipation of the gifts that for, are forever being given to us. And how we live then shines out to the world and it returns back to us as blessings pressed down and running over. Namaste. Thank you. So this is another Karen Drucker song. And you can feel free to sit and enjoy the song and do, the, uh, and do some hand movements with me. Or you can stand, whatever you prefer. It goes like this. I send my love over the mountain. I send my love over the sea I send my love into the heavens and it returns to me that's it I send my love over the mountain I send my love over the Send my love into the heavens and it returns to me. Susan, you know these really well. Would you be willing to come to the front and show? Because you're so good at it, it's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. I send my love. Over the mountain, I send my love over the sea. I send my love into the heavens, and it returns to me. I send my love over the mountain. Think about who you're sending that. Send my love over the sea. I send my love into the heavens. And it returns to me. Now think about somebody halfway across the country. I send my
about someone who's on a different plane. I send my love over the mountain. I send my love over the sea. I send my love into the tell you about another demonstration by the way we've been treating for this little three-year-old great-grandson of Ann Cummins and she sent me a picture of him sitting on a on a bench with a couple of other little kids it's just a, he's three years old he's a cute little thing and then she sent me a text saying there's nothing they can find nothing wrong whatever it was just simply went away and um, so he's fine he's fine and I thank every one of you who did their prayer work because it, this stuff works. <laughs> okay, so why don't you join me in the offering affirmation. My gift goes forth to heal and prosper and bless all that it touches. It is an evidence of my conviction that God is the source and substance of my supply. I share generously of my good, knowing that it returns to me multiplied abundantly, and so it is. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. Again, thank you for your, um, for your generosity that allows us to be a beneficial presence in this community. Um, we are indeed blessed, indeed blessed. So let's uh, close this portion out in prayer and then, and then go look at the goodies. Um, that, that quiche that Susan talked about, I have to brag, my husband made that. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and I want to tell you a little secret. <laughs> um, it was supposed to be a spinach keys, <laughs> but he forgot to buy the spinach. <laughs> so it turned out to be a broccoli quiche, and it was just perfect. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, life is fun. Life is fun. <laughs> so again, let's close this portion out in prayer and, and, uh, and join us for all those goodies that are up there. And I think that I'll probably leave pretty quickly afterwards if you would forgive me. It's a little painful still. So. <sighs> but I'd rather be here than anywhere else in the whole world. So I know that there's one mind, one divine intelligence, one power and presence and I know that this power and presence is with us every moment of every day. It is part of who and what we are. 
And I know that the messages that we get, those intuitive voices that say, it's time to pray. It's time to pray. To listen to those and just send a deep good thought to whatever that solution might be that you're struggling with. I give thanks that we are here today, that uh, life is good, and that we have so many blessings, and I simply just uh, send that out into the world and allow it to return to each and every one of us as we say together, and so it is. Thank you so much. Can we stand and sing stand? everybody we're living a new world now we're not just making it we're living it so let there be peace I am a stand for peace let there be love I am a stand for love let there be joy I am a stand for joy we are living a new world 